What's up everyone? I am super excited to show you this build. I've been flying this setup for the past few months and I can honestly say it's the best quad I've ever built. In this build video, I'll be building the Neutron R. This build video will be a little bit different from my older videos. When I look back on some of my old build videos, they honestly put me to sleep. Those older build videos were aimed at first time builders, so I showed every single step, pretty much the entire build. It's super detailed, but also super boring for anyone who's ever built a quad before. In this video, I'll try to keep it moving quickly, but try to show all the important steps. I'll have the step-by-step -step build post on my website, as well as a build kit for anyone who wants to easily replic replicate this build. This build kit will have all the beta flight program file and all the small miscellaneous stuff you need to make this build. First I'll go over the parts and why I chose them. I'll be building the Neutron R in this video. I'll have a Proton R build video um, using slightly different parts in another build video, but I prefer the Neutron over the Proton. Even though it's just slightly smaller and slightly uh, lighter, it's just enough to make it feel much more nimble and easier to control. Physically, the difference between the Neutron R and the Proton R is that the Neutron is designed for 20x20 20 20 and the Proton is designed for 30x30. 30 30. The Neutron is slightly lighter and slightly smaller. Other than that, they both have the 4.5mm CNC aluminum plates with the uh, mill channels in the arms to, elim to eliminate any arm slot, threaded holes for the arms, and a full list of features um, I'll put in the, for the frames, I'll put a link in the descriptions below. The new R-frame's arm geometry is built into the nucleus plate. The front arms are stretch X and the rear are X, so it is a hybrid frame. I'll be running the same 5 inch arm for the front and the rear, so it's a 5 inch hybrid. If you want to run the true hybrid, you can run 6 inch arms in the rear. I like running the same 5 inch arm front and rear because I only have to carry one size arm and it flies great. There's a slight difference between the 6 inch arms in the rear, but I feel like the six the difference is not significant enough for the troubles of carrying two different arms. For the ESC, I'll be running the Akon AK32 20x20 ESC. I've tried pretty much all the 20x20 ESC. Ori 25, Ori 32, Emax 35A, Speedix GS25A, HGLRC, Flight 1 Spark and the Spark 32, which I don't have anymore because it caught on fire. The AK-32 is the only ESC that we've used that's been able to handle anything we build with it. Captain Vanover flies 6S with 1900 kV motors on it, so yeah, it, don't worry, it can handle whatever setup you decide to use. This is the Talon F7 Fusion. Actually, this is my third attempt at making this build video. I started with the Talon F7, then the Talon F4, and now the Fusion F7. Every time I'm about to make a video, they release a new flight controller. Instead of making a build video on an old flight controller, I decided to wait. The Talon F7 has everything you'd want from a flight controller. It has the processing speed and the multiple UARTs of a Talon F7 and the built-in pit switch of the Talon F4. What's special about the Fusion is that now it uses a dual gyro like the now defunct uh, Helio. But before flight controllers had built-in pit switches, I was using the Talon F7 paired with the HOA pit switch. It worked great, but it required some extra wiring and you had to use an additional little board that you had to figure out how to mount. The built-in pit switch is so easy to use. To enable the pit switch on the Fusion, all you do is connect the VTX just like you would with any other VTX, then go in beta flight and assign a switch. That's it, and you're done. Pit switches aren't only for team races. I love the ability to turn off the VTX with a switch on my Tranus. It prevents the VTX from overheating while you're sitting on the blocks or if you crash before the race is over. Another thing I love about the Talon Fusion is that all the necessary solder pads are on the top side of the board. This makes building and fixing so much easier. This is the TBS Unified Pro 32 Nano. It's the best VTX I've ever used. 
I used to have so many issues with video at races, but ever since I started using this uh, Pro 32, I never have issues with video. I won't get too much about how get into too much about how badass this uh, VTX is because I did a full review. Uh, I'll put a link in the descriptions below. The Foxier Micro Pro is my go-to camera for all my builds. I've tried the other CMOS cameras like the Predators, but I just never really like the color and the contrast on those. The Micro Pros have have a great color contrast and they look great for night flying with just one simple adjustment that I'll show later on in the video. For the antenna, I'll be using the Foxier Lollipop antennas. These are great an antennas. They cost half as much as the Axes and work exactly the same. And I'll be using the Crossfire Nano, which is pretty much standard for builds these days. And then I have the uh, custom Immortal T antenna mount for the R-Frame. For the motors, I'll be using the Lumineer Xylo 2205-1750 Popo Pro. The Pope Pro is a system created by Lumineer that lets you mount props without the need for an M5 lock nut. There's three little nubs inside uh, the shaft that pop out and hold the props in place. I tried the original Pope Pros at, the, at last year's I.O. and they were trash. They have the this little nub that sticks out so whenever you hit a gate the, pop, the, the props pretty much just pop off. But the Popo Pro, the nut or the little button that, that disengages the motor are recessed over here. So you just have to use a little uh, like an M2 driver to push the button to um, release the nut. But honestly, I've been using these uh, Popo Pros for the past three months or so. And I've gone through at least a hundred sets of props and I've only had one prop come off. What I love about these Popo Pros is that it only takes a few seconds to put on a prop. You're done. And then to change a the prop, you just push this little nub in the middle. You turn the to turn the motor shaft to disengage the nubs, and then you pop it off, and then you get a new prop, and you're ready to go. So it really, only takes about 10 seconds to swap all four props on these Popo Pros. So for this build, you can go with either 4S or 6S. Just go with whatever you're comfortable with. I'll have more information on motors on the build post on my website. Let's get started with the build. So since we're mounting the crossfire under the ESC, the first thing we're going to do is just prepare the crossfire by soldering up all the wires to it. This green wire is from the Pro32 Nano VTX. It's going to channel 4 and this is for our smart audio. So let's just go ahead and heat shrink it and then use a little piece of Gorilla double sided tape. Next, you're just going to place the little rubber grommets that came with the AK-32 into the ESC. And then just double side tape the crossfire to the bottom of the ESC in this orientation shown. Next, we're going to assemble the frame. Because of the arm channels in the nucleus plate, there's really only one way the arms can fit into the, the frame. Because of the hybrid geometry of the frame, the front mount holes and the back mount holes are different uh, widths. So just when you're mounting the bottom plate, just make sure this little arrow points to the front or the top of the frame. Once you have the bottom plate, it's just as simple as just sliding the arms into the channels and putting the screws in. Make sure you use these two bottom screws. These two screws prevent the arms from moving inside the channels. Next, screw in the 20mm screws right into the threads of the nucleus plate. I found having threaded holes in the nucleus plate hold the stack screws in place so it makes it much easier to build. Instead of having the ESC sit directly on the nucleus plate, I like to use the, the butter mounts and just cut them to different heights that I need. Here I'm just cutting them in half so they'll give me a little about a 2 millimeter gap from the bottom of the nucleus plate to the ESC just to make sure nothing on the ESC is touching the bottom plate. Next just push the crossfire through the top of the nucleus plate and then make sure you thread the holes to where the crossfire wires are going through the front 
and the antenna is going through the front and then the green smart audio wire is heading out to the back. And then I'm just using this custom R-frame crossfire antenna mount to secure the antenna. This little mount was designed for the frame and it screws right into the nucleus plate. Next we're just going to mount all the motors on the frame. Since the Neutron R uses 5mm arms, the motor screws that came with these motors I think were 6mm or something, uh, which is too short. So I'm using M3 by 8 screws to mount the motors. I like to use gaffer's tape to secure my motor wires. I found that as long as you keep the motor wires flat against the arms, there's very little chance of them getting cut by the props. I like using gaffer's tape because it's like duct tape but stronger and is removable. Now that the wires are taped to the arms, you can cut the length you need for the ESC. It really doesn't matter how you wired it up because we can reverse any motors that aren't spinning in the correct directions in BO Heli. Now we're just going to strip and tin all the leads for the motor wires. To make soldering the wires onto the ESC, it makes it so much easier if you pre-tin the pads on the ESC. When I'm soldering wires to the ESC, I always like to melt the solder on the ESC and then just push the motor wire into the melted solder. Once it's melted, hold the motor wire still until the, the solder cools down and you should have a really clean joint. Next we're going to install the battery cable. It's really important to pre-tin the battery leads and the pad before soldering. because These cables are a lot fatter and if you don't pre-tin it, you're going to get a cold solder joint. When I install battery cables, it's the same way as doing the motors. I like to melt the solder on the pad first and then push the wire into the melted solder. I found this method gives you a lot cleaner joint than trying to melt the wire and then the pad. So as you can see when I was installing the positive, I kind of covered up the hole for the positive lead. It was really hard to solder because I had a camera right in front of my face. But here I'm just melting the solder on the positive lead and pushing the wire through. So when you're doing it yourself, just try not to cover up that hole because it will make installing the cap a little bit harder. And the, these capacitors have a polarity, so make sure you have the correct polarity connected on your cap. And then I just put a little piece of heat shrink over the XT60. Now we can get ready to install the flight controller. Just go ahead and install the rubber grommets that came with the Talon F7. And once again, I'm using butter mounts to use as spacers. Here I'm using a full butter mount, which is four millimeters. So the cool thing about using the Talon flight controllers is that they're designed to be used with the AK32 ESCs. Use this harness here to plug directly into the ESC and it'll power your flight controller. It'll have all your motor signals and your current sensor already wired up. Next we're just going to get the cable ready for the Foxier Micro Pro. So here I'm just removing the purple wire because the purple wire is the VSEN wire for the um, camera OSD which we're not using because we're going to be using the voltage from the Betaflight OSD. So let's just get a little sharp tool and remove the wire and then just going to measure a little bit of probably like an inch or so of 
of wire and just cut it to length. So here I'm just going to pre-tint all the pads that I'll be using on the Talon F7. And of course I already pre-tint all the wires that we're going to be using but I just, I just didn't show it to save time in this video. But when you're soldering always pre-tint your wires and pads before soldering. So now I'm soldering up the crossfire. This is the ground 5 volt. And the white wire is channel 2 on the crossfire. Channel 2 always goes to the receive of your free UART. And then the yellow is channel 1. So now this is the camera signal, camera ground, and camera power. Since we're using the Unify Pro 32 Nano, it's a 5 volt only VTX. So here we're going to select the 5 volt output for the power right here. So now I'm just going to install three wires for the video, power, and ground for the VTX. Now I'm just cutting the wires for the VTX to length. I'll be using a 20 by 20 half VTX plate to mount the Pro 32. Just use some double sided tape to mount the VTX. I like to mount my VTX a little bit off centered from the stack just in case if there's any radio frequency coming off the ESC or flight controller maybe having the VTX far away from the stack will have uh, will give you a cleaner image. Instead of using plastic nuts for the stack I like to use M3 lock nuts. You really only need about two nuts to secure your stack and using these nuts you never have to worry about losing nuts on your stack. That doesn't sound right, but you get the idea. And then just cut the wire for your VTX. And once again, pretend your leads, especially on this Pro 32 Nano, these pads are super tiny. So it's really important that you pretend the leads. Otherwise you'll have cold solder joints and uh, you'll lose video. So this green wire is channel 4 from Crossfire. This is for the Smart Audio. And the yellow wire is video. Black is ground. And then the 5 volt power from the flight controller. Next I'm just going to install the camera. I'm using a fixed angle camera mount to mount my camera. Using these fixed camera angle mounts make it so much easier to fly consistently because you never have to worry about where your, where your camera is pointing no matter how many gates you hit. I designed a little mount to hold the capacitor on this frame. I used to install my caps at the battery lead but I found that, ma that makes the battery lead really fat and prone to getting hit by the props. So mounting it on the frame really eliminates the, the problem of the, the capacitor getting hit by the props. At this point we're pretty much done with the build. I'm using a multimeter with the continuity setting just to make sure we don't have any obvious shorts. When I plugged it up I did get the full chimes but the VTX didn't turn on. That's because we haven't assigned the pit switch which we'll do in the next video. So I hope you found this video helpful and stay tuned for the next video when we do the Tarana setup and the Betaflight setup which should be pretty easy. If you have any questions just put them in the comments below and I'll answer them. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the little bell icon to be notified when I put out part 2 of this build video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.